east of Africa, between the Rift Valley and Lake Victoria, a high plateau covering an area of 30,000 square kilometers is the scene of one of the most spectacular migrations on Earth. Every year, hundreds of thousands of news follow the rains in search of pasture, in a cyclical migration which marks the lives of both plants and animals in the regions they cross. The government of Tanzania, aware of the importance of this migration, decided to give official protection to 17,000 square kilometers of this region. And so the Serengeti National Park was born. The Serengeti National Park is a vast savanna of grass with occasional isolated patches of trees and bushes. Both the amount of rainfall and the numbers of news, zebras and gazelles vary enormously according to the seasons, and the vegetation is very resistant to grazing. Some types of grass can spring up just an hour or so after the first shower. The news don't stay long in one place. The enormous herds rapidly devour all the pasture, and so they have to move on, followed by other herbivores who share the same diet. Every year they cover about 3,000 kilometers in their constant wanderings, which take them to the edges of the park, across the border into Kenya, and to the Maasai Mara. A large population also means many deaths, and for some animals that means food. The vultures of the Serengeti eat 11 million kilos of meat every year, which gives us a good idea of the important role they play within the park. A dead zebra is being devoured by the vultures. There is no set feeding order, and whoever gets to eat first will be determined by how hungry and how strong they are. More vultures arrive constantly as they see others descend from the sky. A dead animal is discovered by just one vulture, and in no time, hundreds have gathered around. There are six different species of vulture in the Serengeti. The bearded vulture and the white-headed vulture are not only scavengers but also predators and are capable of eating muscle and hard tissue thanks to their powerful beaks. Then they leave way for the white-backed vulture and Rupel's vulture, who, with their long featherless necks, can reach right down into the entrails. Finally, the hooded vulture and the Egyptian vulture will clear up anything left on the body on the ground. From a great distance, the vultures can be seen landing, and this helps scavengers on the ground find the dead bodies. The vultures are not strong enough to fight the hyenas for food. But they're used to this and simply wait patiently by until the hyenas have eaten their fill, and then again they attack the dead animal. As they wait, other vultures seeing the commotion on the ground fly down to join them. So as the food becomes less, the number of hopeful diners increases. The wait seems never-ending, but no one moves. At last, the hyenas leave and there is still plenty of meat. 
The vultures again fall on the zebra, and in an instant the lifeless body is covered in a sea of feathers, claws and beaks. The monotony of the landscape is broken by the occasional outcrops of granite rock dotted across the plain. These are the Kopjes, solitary mountains in the savanna, like islands formed 500 million years ago and revealed by erosion. Due to their strange morphology and the fact that there is always water and cracks in the rocks, many of them are home to species of plant and animals found nowhere else. rocky areas we will see animals that are not found on the open plains. Like the Rendunka or the Dik Dik, the smallest antelope in the world, about the size of a domestic cat. The strange name comes from the sound it makes, a sound sadly well known to hunters because it warns the gazelles of their presence. The surface of the rock is where the Agama lizards meet. The brightly colored male of the species tries to attract the female by upward movements of his head. If she accepts, she moves closer and repeats the same movement. Well done. The bright coloring of the males also has its negative side. They can be seen not only by the females, but also by the Varu eagles and the kites that live on the kopjes. The male must display in order to defend his territory from competitors and attract potential mates. And when he does, it is the perfect time for the kite to spot him. The females realize the danger, but the male is too busy showing off and doesn't notice until the very last moment. The Kompjes are also frequented by the fastest land mammal on Earth. The cheetah, capable of reaching speeds of 110 kilometers an hour when hunting, is completely exhausted after each chase and so needs to choose his prey carefully and make as few mistakes as possible. The high grass of the savanna, which provides excellent cover, also prevents him from spying his prey. So he climbs up to get a better view and spot potential victims. Thanks to his tremendous speed, the cheetah is the most successful feline hunter in the Serengeti. However, with the advantage of speed comes the lack of strength to fight off lions and hyenas, and whenever they can, they will snatch his food from him. This herbivore, the Thompson's gazelle, makes up 90% of the cheetah's diet, and he will join them on their annual migration. Wherever they go, he follows in pursuit. The gazelles follow the herds of news as they cross the savanna. Some types of grass are stimulated by the saliva of the gazelle and produce shoots shortly after being cropped, thereby becoming a succulent meal for the gazelles. The new represents less than 5% of the cheetah's diet, but he is nonetheless very much affected by their migrations. Life in the Serengeti is influenced by the migrations of the news, but is ultimately determined by the rains. 
Between November and December, the humid westerly winds bring the long-awaited rains from the Indian Ocean. The grass of the savanna, which during the dry season has lain dormant, gridly soaks up the water and shoots up in an explosion of activity which, in just a few days, transforms the landscape of the national park. From the Maasai Mara Reserve in Kenya, where they have spent the dry season, the news moves south again following the rains. Their cycle of migrations is complete. Year after year, endless lines of news have come along these same routes and have thus etched permanent tracks stretching right across the savanna. First towards Lake Victoria, along the western trail at the end of April. The rains move on from the Iasi area and the news duly follow. August takes them to the Masai Mara Reserve in Kenya. As every year, hundreds of news die in the crossing of the Mara River but the majority reach the northern bank and, after four months of wandering, are able to take a well-deserved rest. Finally, in November, the sky indicates that the rains are once more moving south and again crossing the Mara, the news return to the plateau of Gorongoro and onto the plains of the Serengeti. At this time of year, the grasslands regain their splendor. The rain soaks the earth and almost immediately the grass springs up, transforming the landscape into a sea of green a seemingly endless supply of food. The intense grazing of the news determines the types of grass that can be found in the savanna. Every year the vegetation is mercilessly cropped and constantly trampled. In time, the species best able to withstand this treatment have survived and the plain has become specifically designed to meet the dietary needs of the news. In the northern region of the Serengeti, the landscape changes. The vast open plains give way to trees and instead of the short, resistant grasses, we find other types growing up to two meters high. The animals, too, are different here. A leopard. This cat prefers trees to empty spaces. The trees can be used as watchtowers and provide shelter in a safe place out of reach of the lions and hyenas where he can hide the animals he has hunted down. His rate of success in hunting is much lower than that of the cheetah and he simply can't afford to have his food stolen. As well as the giraffe and the leopard, we find other species that prefer this region to the open savanna. One of these is an incredible animal that feeds on the leaves of the trees, the hyrax. Despite its appearance, this animal is not a member of the rodent family. However strange it may seem, its nearest relative among the animals of the Serengeti is the elephant. On the western edge of the park, the Grometi River has its own particular ecosystem. This is the land of the hippopotamus. They are nocturnal animals dozing during the day and making the most of the cool of the night to eat the 60 kilos of grass they need every day. 
As the temperature rises, they move and find rest and relief in the water. It may not look like it, but the skin of the hippopotamus is very sensitive to the sun. When they are not submerged in the water, they have to cover themselves in mud to protect themselves from the harmful rays. The area around the river is very different from the savanna. Neither water nor food are scarce here, and the animals don't need to migrate to better lands. The only precaution they need to take is to be careful along the riverbanks, where what looks like a rock might suddenly move up and eat them. For the time being, drought is not a problem, even in the savannah. It is the rainy season and both water and pasture are plentiful. There is no thought of migration. Everyone is concentrating on a completely different activity, reproduction. For the grand gazelles, this is the mating season, and each male has to defend his group of females. Though fights do occasionally occur, a show of strength is usually all that is required to frighten off weak arrivals. Their close relatives, the Thompson's gazelle, seem to have followed their example and are also ready to mate. The grasslands are soon covered with males testing their strength and couples engaged in courting, and not just the gazelles. Sex is on their minds, and they are less vigilant than normal. This is good news for the carnivores. Contrary to popular belief, hyenas in fact kill 60% of their food and are an enemy to be reckoned with here in the savanna. They prefer hunting at night, but will seize any opportunity, even during the day. A Thompson's gazelle has been killed. While the hyena feeds, a vulture, as is the custom, patiently awaits his turn. But this time he will be disappointed. The hyena has young and carries the dead animal away in order to feed them. Of all the predators in the Serengeti, only one is feared by the hyenas. This is the largest and most powerful of all, the lion. Stealing food is normal in the Serengeti. The lions steal from the hyenas, the hyenas steal from the cheetahs, and the leopards hide their food in the trees to prevent it from being taken. Not even the powerful lions are free from scavengers. When they are eating, the hyenas wouldn't dare do anything, but they are waiting until the female, who is the last to eat, is left alone. The rest of the group, having eaten their fill, will do nothing to defend her. Now is the time. The hyenas close in, forcing the lioness to abandon the prey.
The female doesn't put up any resistance and simply abandons the dead animal. It would be too dangerous to fight alone against a pack of hyenas, and the hyenas let her go. After all, they have got what they wanted. Again, they take some of the meat back to their lair, where the young are anxiously waiting to be fed. Between January and March, coinciding with the rainy season, one of the park's most spectacular events takes place, the birth of the news. In just a few weeks, 400,000 females will give birth here on the plains of the Serengeti. At this time of year, the grass is growing and is rich in nutrients. So the mothers are well fed towards the end of their pregnancy and the development of the newborn calves will not be hampered by lack of food. birth from mid-morning on, precisely the time when predators are resting. The later in the day they are born, the less time the young will have to find their feet before the lions again come out to hunt. The surgency has meant that gnus are the fastest of all hoofed animals in learning to coordinate their movements. In just five minutes, the young can stand up and an hour or two later, will be able to follow their mother across the savannah. The nutritious placenta is one way of distracting the attention of predators and scavengers while the young are learning to walk. Whenever possible, the mother will leave the placenta as far away as she can from the place of birth. Scavengers rapidly descend on this feast. The placentas are very nutritious and are not defended by the mothers. In no time at all, they are being fought over by vultures, jackals and the odd marabou stork. The jackals are the first to grab the food, giving no chance to the vultures. This female is about to give birth. The presence of jackals in the area is not normally a danger, but when giving birth, they can do very little to defend themselves, and so they are much more apprehensive. The mother becomes increasingly nervous, stops halfway through the birth, and runs off with the calf still hanging out in search of a safer place. The jackal, paying no attention to this crisis, has found what he was looking for, a placenta. This ability to stop the birth halfway through allows the news to escape in extreme conditions. Once out of danger, the female then finishes giving birth. The mother can identify her newborn calves both by sight, smell and sound. This is vital as often, following a stampede, the young are lost and the mothers have to find them. And in order to do so, they must be able to recognize the cry of their calf among all the other sounds of the herd. Death is a real possibility if a calf gets lost. No mother will defend another's young. After all, the more that die, the greater the chances of survival 
for her own. If this solitary new doesn't find its mother, it will not survive. It will either become separated from the group or will be kicked to death by an adult. Some young die along the way, but the majority survive and leave with the rest of the herd on the never-ending migration northwards. This cycle still today marks life in the Serengeti National Park. Thank <laughs> you.